I have grown up in Toledo my entire life. Right. My, my past 51 years, well, 51 years. And um, there's certain names and places and things that show up and we don't know where they came from. And one name that I've known and heard all of my life and not really known the story of is the story of Ella P. Stewart. Um, I know generally who she was and what mm -hmm. she was, but tell me the story of Ella P. Stewart. Ella P. Stewart's story is an amazing story. Uh, she wasn't born and raised in Toledo. She came here as an adult, but her story before that really helps uh, explain what comes of her life, right? Mm -hmm. So she was born and raised in Virginia. And uh, she got married as a, as a young woman. Um, her first marriage was to a black chauffeur. And they had a young child, and they lost that young child uh, to the whooping cough disease back in the day. Um, and after she lost her child, she was told by friends that she really needed to do something else to get her out of that melancholy. So she took a job as a bookkeeper for a pharmacy uh, company. And she started to really become engaged and interested in the work of the pharmacist, right? So uh, she decided that she would go to school. First, she had to get accepted into the pharmacy school, right. which was very, very difficult for her. But uh, Ella P. Stewart was anything but persistent. I, I like to say that she was relentless, fearless, and very persistent. And she was able to get uh, admission into the University of Pittsburgh's pharmacy school. Um, but. As she was there, uh, she uh, got, got her education under very segregated circumstances. For instance, when they were in the classroom, the way the classroom set up was the white male students got the seats in the front row, and then slowly but surely, the next row of seats were uh, designated for maybe Jewish American men, and then women, and then the black female at the back of the class. So uh, the way that she got her education was different than the white males in her class, but she persevered and got her degree uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. She was the first uh, African American woman to get her pharmacy degree from that school. And that's how she started on that path that led her to, eventually led her to Toledo. While in school at the University of Pittsburgh, Ella Phillips fell deeply in love with a local pharmacy clerk. His name was William Stewart, but many people simply called him Doc. Ella would soon marry Doc and the two would end up moving to the city of Detroit. Ella wasn't too keen on living in the big city and yearned for somewhere smaller where she could open up her own pharmacy. Just south of Detroit, Ella visited Toledo, Ohio and came across a building that she fell in love with. Before long, Ella and Doc were new Toledoans looking to make their mark. She was able to find a building at City Park in Indiana where eventually they would open up their pharmacy and they lived above the pharmacy for several years. Um, she walked into that building and she knew that was the building for her. So they decided to establish the pharmacy there. But um, in 1922 is when they opened up their pharmacy. Ella and Doc quickly built a reputation as honest, hardworking people. For years, the stewards served their community and developed lifelong relationships with all of their customers. For the African Americans that were migrating from the South, Stewart's Pharmacy represented more than just a place to get your medication. It was seen as a beacon of hope and a place to call their own. Soon, Ella's work as a neighborhood pharmacist would lead her down an illustrious path of community activism and engagement. As she worked her way through these national organizations, she also started to be uh, well known on the international stage. She was uh, named as an ambassador out of the UN and the UNESCO program, where she was a goodwill ambassador and she would travel to Asia, she traveled to Pacific Islands, she was a member of an association that is still operation operating now, it's the Pan, uh, Pan Pacific South Asian Women's Group that they meet and they would conduct conventions all over the world. There are pictures in her scrapbooks of Ella P. Stewart at these various conventions in the island nation of Tonga, um, in Greece, in India. So she traveled all over the world. She was always interacting with young women and trying to mentor them. Uh, and that's the work that she conducted with all these different groups that she uh, was involved with. So to go back to the L.A.P. Stewart School, which is how we all know her here in Toledo, right? right? right. He says the pharmacy closed in 1945. Unless you were older, you don't remember her being in the pharmacy, but everyone knows about the L.A.P. Stewart School. Um, and it was built in 1960. And I think they dedicated it to her when it was finished in 1961. And mm -hmm. that was so important to her because 
all the work that she had done with young people and with black families and education and educational opportunities were always very important to her. Well, that's cool. You know what, I just want to thank you for um, stopping by and, and sharing uh, your knowledge of LMP Stewart because like I said, I've been here my entire life and I've heard the name mm -hmm. and I knew she was a pharmacist. That's, right. that's That right. was my extent of right. it basically. And I don't think people realize the gem mm -hmm. that we had that was LMP Stewart. Brought to you locally by Dale Riggs Funeral Home. Funerals as unique as your life.